honor you and thank you. We worship and honor you. We exalt, adore, glorify, and magnify you. For you are the God of all creation and the God of power. We thank you for bringing us together this weekend, your servants from all over, to put heads together on how we can be our best for you. And we thank you for all the vessels you have used in different and diverse ways. Beginning with our Father in the Lord on Friday. Lord, we pray that as we labor in this part of eternity, holiness will be our watchword. Yeah. Holiness will be our song. Yeah. Holiness will be our prayer. Yeah. And at the end of our sojourning here on earth, we will meet with that great and mighty Holy One in Jesus' name. Amen. Between now and then, keep us true. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I thank you so much. You may have your seats. I want to bless the name of the Lord for making it possible for us to come together as laborers together in the vineyard of the Lord to see where we are, where we're coming from, and where we ought to be, where we are going. And we thank the Lord because we have heard it again and again that we cannot afford to be stagnant. We cannot afford to live in the past. And we bless the name of the Lord for you all that have come from all over. I want to specially appreciate all our volunteers that left every other thing to attend to us, heaven will attend to you. Your labors will not be in vain in Jesus' name. And for those of you that are joining us online today, via Zoom, YouTube, Facebook, or whatsoever, I pray that the blessings of the Lord will be multiplied unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we came this time around, that is, this weekend, to plan together, reason together, learn together, study together as servants of the Lord, study to show that self approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And on Friday, we listen to the message from our general superintendent, uh, the challenge, divine challenge for this present time. The divine challenge, the challenge of the gospel, the challenge of keeping the church, the challenge of taking the gospel to the rest of the world, the challenge, the challenge of preaching this holy word of God without additive, without coloring, and uh, without any other thing that is not of God. And we went further to consider uh, from yesterday stirring up your gift. Because we have all been gifted with a gift, especially in the spirit area, spirit realm. And uh, if we don't stir it up, it's not going to be visible. If we don't stir it up, it's not going to be effective. If we don't stir it up, it's not going to do or impact the people that needed to be impacted, we went further to look at evolving informational technology for ministry. Yes, technology is out there, and you heard it yesterday. Most of all the people that have invented all this technology are not Christians, are not people that know the Lord. And what are we doing? What then can we do? We can take that which is of the world, turn it around, and use it for the glory of the name of the Lord. And that is part of evolving so that we don't just keep on going by their dictates. We can dictate the tune. I say we can dictate the tune. If you will do your part and I will do my part, and you will not just say, social media is not for me, that is not for me. If it is not for you, your children will go there. Your family member will go there, and whatever is there is what will be given to them. But when you get involved and I get involved, and then they post their own worldly thing, we post our own godly thing, eventually, when light and darkness meet together, one will give way to the other one. And I know the one that will be the winner. The light of the Lord will prevail in Jesus' name. 
And so we also went into breakout session. We went into music in ministry. How can we turn our music around and understand the power of music? The first demonologist in the world was a musician, David. It was through the play of music that demon, devil, evil spirit let um, uh, Saul, the king, and uh, look at Miriam, the first prophetess. She was a singer as well. The power of music in ministry. Understand, preaching here on earth, one day we come to an end. Teaching here on end, uh, here on earth, one day we come to an end. But singing continues all through eternity, and that is why if you are in the singing ministry, understand it's not an entertainment ministry; it's a spiritual ministry. It's such a ministry that will translate into glory. And when we finally get make it to heaven, because we'll make it to heaven. Together we sing the hallelujah chorus in Jesus' name. We also look at money in ministry. Money answers all things. We need money to be able to get the job done. If you see anything going good, going on anywhere, it takes money. And how do we use the money? Both as workers, as ministers, and as members of the church, we need to work together in such a way that we make provision for the work of the ministry, and the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. We also considered networking, ministerial networking. How do we network with other ministers? How do we network with other ministries? A tree does not make a forest. And we're talking about digital ecosystem. It is all about integrating together. It's all about working together. You bring your gift, I bring my gift, and then we put everything together, and then we reach out to the rest of the world. And then these laborers, the Bible said that the husband, mom, um, Tell me how it is now. Is worthy of his labor, and thou shalt not muzzle the ox that tread the corn. The ministers, they are laboring. Most of, most of them are not being paid. How do we take care of them? Ministers' welfare. And those of you listening to me online, in all your location, your pastor needs attention. Your pastor needs your prayer. Your pastor needs your appreciation. Your pastor needs your caring. Remember them that labor over you and honor them and appreciate them. Don't let them die in silence. Many of you, when you have your issue or challenges, you can go to them. But when the pastor has a problem, where does he go? So make your pastor happy. Don't be a problem to your pastor. And whether you're a pastor or not, please understand, at the end of the day, we are all going to give account for the life we live. One of two things, either the problem we have to solve or the problem we have to create, you will account for it. And so make your pastor to be able to labor over you joyfully is part of the welfare. And when you are doing well, you are making your pastor happy. You are not grieving the spirit pastors, ministers, welfare, and then engaging the elites. Jesus died for the whole world, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He died for you, he died for me, he died for the politicians, he died for the rich men, he died for the sinner, he died for the prostitutes. How do we connect with the elites? and then bring the gospel unto them we we'll look into that also and then the power of media the power of media in case you do not know anywhere in the world that the president of the land have issue with the media is a matter of time that president is gone and so here in the church also we need the power of the media we need our media department to be what it ought to be so that the message will be clear enough. Clarity is important in the delivery of the message. We need to ensure that uh, our keyboard is working well, our microphone is working well, our screens are working well, and whatever we are doing, everything is fine. We went further to effective preaching in an evolving world. The world is evolving. 
the way we used to do things uh, in the past, in case you do not know, those of you that came to Deeper Life later on, many, uh, in the early days of the church, when our Father in the Lord is teaching, he's always holding on to the pulpit like this. From beginning to the end. But that was good for the time. The focus for the time. The attention for the time. But then things are changing. New generation is coming. Technology approach and everything. And so he had to move away from holding the pulpit to standing. Amen. And then just looking. And then he graduated evolving. And then he graduated into moving around. Have you seen him move around? I said, have you seen him move around? And when you are ministering and you are moving around, you just see me move around. What are, what, what are you doing as I'm moving around? What are you doing? You are following me. Praise the Lord. And that is engaging your audience. Praise the Lord. Effective ministry. And then there is something we call no dull moment in preaching. When you are preaching, you are not just saying, um, um, open your Bible to John chapter 5. And then, John chapter 5. No, no dull moment in ministry. Effective preaching in, a, 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 in an evolving world. And then, we ate also yesterday. Did you eat? Did you enjoy the food? Put your hands together for our caterers. But then, as we try to evolve, improve, change, progress, advance, and then look into the age that we are in and try to fit into it the right way. We want to be sure that as we are evolving, we are not dissolving. Amen? As we are evolving, we are not devolving. We are not going down spiritually. We are keeping the standard of the word of God. And so, whether we sing, whether we teach, whether we preach, or any other social thing that we do, we want to be sure that everything is to us and for the purpose of preparing souls for heaven, and they will make it to heaven in Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord, you will not dissolve. And then we look at teaming up to make the team work. Teaming up, once again, you need me, I need you. We need one another. Wherever you are, we need to network together within the church. And then there are people that are outside of the church. We need to connect with them. Those that believe what we believe. Those that are trying to do what we're trying to do. Where we need to learn, we go and learn. And then we all work together as a team by the grace of God. And then we have a community. We, have, we, we are not just like a, a, um, uh, an isolated set of people. We live in the midst of people. How do we connect with our community? Community outreach. How do we impact our community? How do they get to know that we are here? And uh, we look into community outreach for church growth. Then, um, by the grace of God, we look at the one you look at this morning, the evolving church. The evolving church. Where is that church? I said, where is that church? This is that church. I said, this is that church. We are going forward. We are moving forward. So as a minister, as a worker, as a member in the church, we cannot afford to sit on the fence. We need to get up and get going. We need to ensure that our church is evolving. We need to ensure that we are not using the right tool for the right time. And you heard the message on the method, on the member, on the minister, on the ministry. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. And then the question and answer, thank God for all those questions and the answers that came. How many of you enjoyed the worship service, the praise worship? 
If you want to do it, just do it. That was excellent, Toto Bonikaka. Amen. I need a special recording of that. Just for me to enjoy. Amen. And when you record that, please stop it with the final choir member. Holiness forevermore. Amen. I wish I was there in the choir singing with them. They, they make holiness more interesting. Did you get that? I don't know about you. They make holiness more real. Amen. We'll be holy to the end. We'll be holy to the end. At this time, we want to try to wrap it up by looking at the final message. The unchanging God in an evolving world. As we look at the various areas where we need to make a change or make changes, we need to understand the God factor in all of this. Who is God? That letter, G-O-D. This is my own definition of God. He is the generational outstanding deity. From generation to generation, you look at other gods, you look at other power, it's the no one and the only one that outstands them all. And he is the supreme being. Praise the Lord. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 he said, I am the Lord, I change not. The unchanging God. In Psalm 102 verses 25 to 27 he said, I said, O oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generation. Generational outstanding deity. Your years are throughout all generations. It says, of old, hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. Listen him. They shall perish. Anything you see, and the mundane things of life. A time came that they, uh, they started, a time will come that they will end. They all shall perish, but thou shall endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shall thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. I need a better one. So God is the God of all generation. He is our God in all generation. The only constant thing in life is change. But the only thing that does not change is who? Is God. And that God alone is the one in whom you can put your trust. You must put your trust. He never fails. He never disappoints. He will keep you true to the end in Jesus' name. But then understand that that was the unchangeable God or statement the unchangeable God has been misunderstood by many, many people, misapplied by many, many people. And the consent of it has been misapplied in so many quarters, especially in our church. This concept has made many to stand against necessary growth. This is how we used to do it. God does not change. And so our style must not change. God does not change. Our method must not change. The world is changing. Even yourself, you are changing. 20 years ago, this is not how you were. Praise God. If you look at me, many years back, I want to say many years back, as, as far back as when I came to Washington here, I see half hair on my head. Praise the Lord. But now I am almost becoming a bald eagle. Praise God. 
Well, thank God is a body go. I'm, 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 I'm swearing high. In Jesus' name. We must grow. Somebody say, grow. God told Pharaoh, let my people go. But then he's telling you and telling me, let my people grow. We must grow in every area of our life. Don't just put your failure on where God does not change. I don't need to change. You need to change. I need to change. We all need to change. And our church needs to change. And we are changing for better in Jesus' name. We are going to develop. We are going to come up with innovations in Jesus' name. All these other people, they don't want any new innovation. You know, sometimes ago, somebody during one of the questions and answer back at the World Health Quarter, and uh, uh, they say, do you have any question? And the person, yes, I have a question. And he said, uh, in the Bible, in the wilderness, they were using wooden pulpits. How come that now we are using glass pulpits? Are we not backsliding? Are you backsliding? No. We are making progress. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. When I was a young boy, uh, you know the Bible, when the Bible was talking, talking about a bush shell, the kind of light. Amen? And then uh, uh, there is, uh, I think I said this before, there is uh, the, the palm, uh, palm fronts. They use the stick for fire. You put it on it. That's what we put in our hand. We hold it like this, and then you are going to the farm. You remember? If you grew up in the village. Praise the Lord. And then uh, a time came that we have this uh, evolving, improvement, progress. Then there is a can, a little can. And then there is a wool, thread. Then the, something is narrow like this. Amen. And then the rest of this is in the kerosene. You know what I'm talking about. And then uh, you put it, and then that is what we're using. And then we made progress again, and then we have lantern. You know what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. And now finally we have electricity. Praise the Lord. If you don't like this electricity, you can go back to the village. <laughs> because God said, let there be light. And there was light. Light is coming to your life. Light is coming to your family. Life is, life is coming to your ministry. In the name of Jesus, every form of darkness, the Lord will disappear in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I talk on three things. Number one, the immutability of our unfathomable God in an evolving world. The immutability of our unfathomable God in an evolving world. Point number two. The institutionalization, institution, institutionalization of an unerasable grand breaking in an evolving world. It's a, it's a big grammar. Praise the Lord. Somebody say evolve. evolve. The institutionalization of unerasable groundbreaking in an evolving world. I will explain that in a minute. And point number three, because they are longer, so I'm giving you the whole three at the first time. The invisibility of the unassuming godly in an evolving world. The invincible, not invisible, invincible. The invincibility of the unassuming godly in an evolving world. Praise the Lord. What was the first one? Somebody can tell me. You are a wonderful student. Put your hands together for yourself. Praise the Lord. The immutability of our unfathomable God in an evolving world. When we talk about immutability, the unchangeability of God. The fact that no matter what happens, God is constant and cannot change and will not change. And no matter heaven and earth will pass away, not a jot or tittle of his word will, uh, will pass unfulfilled. And then when we talk about unfathomable, it's talking about this God is so deep, you can't get to the end of him. This God is so profound. This God is so immeasurable, you can't measure him. 
Amen? Uh, it's talking about our inability to fully explore or understand the person and the power of God. And that makes him God. Praise the Lord. He is the immortal God. He is the invisible God. He is the almighty God. God is still unchanging in his being. He is unchanging in his perfection. He is unchanging in his plan and purpose for the world. He is unchanging in his promises. Whatever he has promised, it will come to pass. Though the vision may tarry, it will not tarry. Wait for it. Wait for it. It will surely come to pass. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. This God is an infinite God. It's infinite. It's endless. It's countless. It's unlimited. It's inestimable. He is the self-existing God. There was none before him, there is none after him. He rules and reigns all eternity. He changes not, self-existent. Not that alone, he is the all-powerful God. And when you say all-powerful, that means any other power, every other power comes under the power of God. That then means principalities and powers, they come under the power of God. And if you are a child of God, the Bible says that he has made us to be seated together with Christ Jesus. We are now in heavenly places. And the Bible says, far. Somebody say far. Somebody say far. Somebody say far. Above principalities and power. So as a child of God, you have the power of God. You are powerful. And anything you decide to do, you can do it in Jesus' name. He is the all-powerful God. He says, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I gathered thee, though thou hast not known me. Even before you know him, he has been God. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know? There was a case that was brought to Jesus. And Jesus, hearing the people, listening to the people, he responded in Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. He said, but, and Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Any situation in your life that seems to be the filing solution, the power of God will solve it. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and is saved. Please don't run outside of God. Don't run outside of the boats. Stay within the boat of salvation and you will get to your destination in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is eternal. We are looking at this God that does not change because he's an eternal God. That's what makes him changeless. He's self-sufficient. Not just that he's all powerful, he's sufficient on his own. He lacks nothing. He needs nothing. He is the almighty God. And how I wish you can connect with this God that can make all things to work out for your good and for his glory. Are you a sinner here today? And you are wondering, I have been so deep in sin. How can I be forgiven? I have the good news for you. He's a merciful God. He said, come unto me, all you that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's the God of mercy. He's the God of love. He's the God of care. His grace is available for you for the grace of God that bringeth salvation as appeared unto all men. That grace will come to your life in Jesus' name. He is a faithful God, eternally faithful. Eternally faithful. This is the immutability of God we are talking about. 
the unchangeability of God we are talking about. The unfathomability of God we are talking about. Amen? He's faithful. He's faithful. And understand that don't weep in for the night. Somebody help me here. I can hear somebody. Now talk to us when I say your joy is coming in the morning. Amen. Those of you in your house, husband and wife, turn to yourself, parents and children, and say, your joy is coming. I will rejoice with you. Because he's a faithful God. He is a holy God. He's a holy God. God cannot be holy today and sinful tomorrow. He's holy. Amen. And let me read to you a few things from the word of God. Exodus chapter 15 verse 11. It says, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, tell me, doing wonders. That wonder is coming to your life. In the name of Jesus. Exodus chapter 28 verse 26. It says, And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and grave upon it like the engraving of a signet holiness unto the lord holiness unto the lord exodus 39 verse 30 and they made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold and wrote upon it a writing like to the engraving of a signet holiness unto the lord we are talking about this holy god the unchangeable god the one that was, that is, and will forever be. Crown, cry, uh, 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 and uh, it will be yours. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 29 verse 2. Give unto the Lord the glory that is due unto him. Worship the Lord. The beauty of holiness. Holiness. Psalm 30 verse 4. Uh, you know, we talk about holiness unto the Lord. The members of the choir told us. They sang it to us. And we need to launch into it. Psalm 30 verse 4. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his. And give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Of his holiness. So, it's a holy God. You can't walk with him without holiness. His dwelling place is holy. His servants are holy. His agents are holy. And if you must walk with him, if I must walk with him, we must be holy. So, God is eternally holy. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 says, Without holiness, ah. Without holiness, no man, no woman, no child, no boy, no girl, no professor, no doctor, no engineer, no pilot, no pastor, no preacher, no pope. No man shall see the Lord without holiness. But then, as I try to wrap this up, I need to also tell you that this God is a consuming fire. And that is why if you are not born again, you need to give your life unto Christ Jesus. Revelation chapter 20. Before you get to Revelation, let's look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29. Hebrews 12, 29. It says, For our God is a consuming fire. And that has not changed. And that will not change. Now come to Revelation chapter 20. If you are not born again, you need to get something done about it today. It says, and I saw, from verse 1, Revelation 21, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, no more deception. Until the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that, he must be loosed again. Jump to verse 10. 
and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the bees and the first prophets are and shall be tormented how long day and night for how long forever and ever and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away and there was found no place for them and i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second day tell me what follow and whosoever you are a pastor and whosoever you are a pastor's wife and whosoever you are a pastor's child and whosoever you are a member of deeper life bible church and whosoever you have a big title or position and whosoever you are a director of your company the founder of your company and whosoever you are the president of a nation and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire that will not be your portion in jesus name you know, the Bible says they were judged. You know, it's one thing for man to judge you. And they may even judge you wrongly. They may say some nasty thing about you. Don't worry about the judgment of man. Be more concerned about the judgment of God. Because when the judgment of God comes, there is no man that will be able to deliver you. And so, we need to be sure that our lives are right with God and that we are committed to this God that does not change. Religion does not change and will not change anyone. Only Jesus can save. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Though your sins be as scarlet, it shall be white as snow. Though like crimson, it will be like wool. If you be willing and obedient, you will eat the fruit of the land. I get to the second point. The institutionalization of what? The unre unerasable, groundbreaking in an evolving world. I said that to say that a lot of things have happened. And the changes that are coming are becoming an institution on their own. They have come to stay. Come to stay. And the world is evolving. And we cannot continue to do things the same way. I did a little research preparing this. And I saw that within the last 50 years, so much change that has taken place. So much. So much. But come to the Bible. Every generation has experienced diverse, unimaginable changes based on the need of the era. There is a need for the church to make some changes right now. If we must remain visible and viable. There is need for the church to change the way we do things. The way we relate with one another. The way we present the gospel. There is need for us to look into our environment and do things new. And things will be new in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 33 verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord, where the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. Pay attention here. There was a creation. If you go to Genesis, the earth was void and without form. And darkness was all over the face of the deep. And God saw the need for a change. And God moved into action. If you don't move into an action in your church, nothing is going to change. If you don't do something about the situation, nothing is going to change. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. 
Psalm 95 verse 4, in his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. 105 verse, Psalm 104 verse 5. Psalm 104 verse 5. Who laid the foundation of the earth that it should not be removed forever? These things have come to be. Look at a lot of things in our time. Look at technology. I used to work in the bank many years back. And we used to count money with our hands. And I can tell you, I have counted money in millions. But a time came that some machines were brought in, automated machines. That made our life easier. Amen? And all we do is just, we just take the money like this, we put it into the machine, prrr, everything is counted. What we would have spent time, and sometimes in the course of counting, oh, you need to see me counting. You try me with money now. Not the one you will get, but the one you will give me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I will demonstrate to you that I used to be a banker and I was trained to count money. Praise God. I was at the bank one day to collect some money. And when they saw me, the person said, oh, wow. How do you do that? I said, I retired from the bank. Praise the Lord. But you make mistakes sometimes. You have to start all over again. And doing it again, then you make another, another mistake, then you start all over. But when you put that into your machine, your life is easy. Your life will become easier. Amen. And now it's even better now than that time. Now you don't just have to go to the teller to get your money. You go to the machine outside. Amen. The banks are closed on Sunday, but you can still get money on Sunday. Am I right? Praise God. Just put in your card. Just put in the number. Prrr, the money is coming. Praise the Lord. That's the power of technology. Look at now you go to the store. You don't even have to go to the store these days. Go, just get your soul. There is something they call scanner. And then you see the barcode. And then you scan it like this. It is done. That is technology. And then e-commerce is there now and a lot of stores are closing because of e-commerce you stay in your house and do your shopping at home before you blink your eyes your package has come praise the lord you don't have to drive all through you don't have to scratch your head oh the store has closed the store of this time and age does not close praise the lord Tech, somebody say technology when I came to this country, you know, some of you think GPS has been here forever. It's not so. Praise God. It used to be something that was being used only by the military many years back. When I came to this country, there was nothing like GPS. It is a road map we carry. And unfortunately, I never knew how to read that map. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And if you happen to live in a place like New York where I first landed, and you ask for direction, those of you New Yorkers that are here, they will tell you, go straight, make right turn, make another turn, keep on going, you can't miss it. When you hear you can't miss it, you have been lost forever. <laughs> Somebody say, Amen. <laughs> But look at it now, GPS game. Technology. And then, even if you are making a mistake, the GPS will say, recalculating. Ah, your life will be recalculated. Yeah. And the GPS will reroute you. Technology. That is why I call it institution. That cannot be erased. They can only be improved upon. They have come to stay. Amen? Yeah. Now, 
Look at cell phone. Everybody. Okay, again, when I don't think some of these things have been forever. No. When I came here, it is pager that people were using. And they hang it. And that thing is like you make a chakra with it. Um, if, you, if you have pager, you're a guy. And then all over the streets, there are pay phones. So when somebody goes to pay phone to die you, they die your number, your, it, it pages you. So you pick it up, you look at it, and then you look for another pay phone and you put a quarter. Praise the Lord. To call the person back. If you miss the person that time, your quarter is gone. But look at it now. Then they came up with mobile phone. That mobile phone was this big. It has antenna. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can you see how the world is evolving? And then you carry those that had mobile phone that time, it was a big deal. You carry it so that everybody you know you have mobile phone. But praise the Lord. Look at it right now. What is this? Smartphone. It's no more mobile. It's smartphone now. Our world has changed. Now you can do anything. Now, if I pick this one, I can tell you, press God. Look at this now. Smartphone. You see all this you are, you are seeing? These are messages. I don't need to carry no book anymore to write anything. I'm in the plane, I'm preparing messages. I'm on my bed, I'm preparing messages. Wherever, and that is just that. Look at it. Each one, can you see? Some of them I have preached. Hundreds of messages are here in the smartphone. The world has changed. You need to change. I need a better one. And people are sitting there and say, this is how we used to do it in 1929. Those that were there in 1929, they are no more here. Maybe you, you, you don't need to be here again. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then come to the area of medicine. Medicine. In those days, you have an issue. They, you go and do x-ray. They will look at it, look at it this way. Now, it's no more extra. Extra is still there, but it's almost obsolete now. And then you have what we now call MRI. Amen? When you go through that uh, tube, I don't know if you have, it's like a dead person. <laughs> they pass you through that tube. Everything in your life, in your body, even to the, uh, uh, the, 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 the innermost part, everything is there. And then they come out. Just pray. That is not a spiritual problem. <laughs> because only the x ray of heaven can detect that one. Amen? But the point I'm making is times have changed. Do you know how many lives have been lost because there was no DNA? Wrong allegation, wrong accusation. But because of DNA now, things are changing. I said things are changing. Surgery, those days, they have to cut you this way, cut you that way. But now there is something they call the non-invasive laser and robotic, uh, let me give you the medical name, laparoscopy. Amen. I'm not a doctor. So you pronounce it better. The laparoscopy is there. That is not being used. How about other areas? Your car. It used to be just gasoline. Now we have electric cars. Things are changing, and they have come to stay. And I don't know if you follow news. They are now saying that at year so and so, I don't remember the year now, there will be almost no gas car anymore. Everything is going to be electric. 
God bless your soul. If there is nowhere to charge your car, <laughs> wherever the car stops, there you sleep. <laughs> Amen. But by then, they must have created something new <laughs> to make their battery not to die anymore. Amen? Talk about solar energy. It's there. This is under energy and communication now. Talk about all these electronic things. There's something called fiber optic. You have your cell phone, you have your internet, but when it is connected by all these fiber optic things, the speed is enormous. Your internet is crawling. We receive energy. If all this is happening, God is counting on you. I get to the third point. Say, God is counting on me. And you will not disappoint God. And I will not disappoint God. The invincibility of the unassuming godly in an evolving world. Unassuming godly. You are a child of God. I'm a child of God. And please understand. The Bible tells us, Psalm 82, verse 6. I have said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. The same brain that somebody had to do Facebook. The same brain that somebody had to do WhatsApp. The same brain that somebody had to do, give me, Instagram. Is the same brain that I have. That you have. And we are children of God. The Bible says that the children of this, gener uh, of, of this world are wiser in their own generation than the children of the kingdom. Now you are crying and lamenting. And the things on the television, where are the Christians? Why are they not uh, at the TV station? Amen? The things on the internet, why are you not there? Why am I not there? The Lord will wake us up. When we talk about the invisibility, we are talking about the strength. The strength, the energy, the indestructibility of a person. The grace, the ability that God has endowed you with. In order to be a blessing to your generation. And you will be a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. I say you will be a blessing in Jesus' name. So, uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says what? I can do how many? All. all things. Pastor, you can do all things. And let me tell you something. When you begin to change, your followers begin to change. That is some mommies. When you begin to change, your children will begin to change. I can do all things. Never you believe in impossibility. And I think I've told you before, anytime, anything crosses my mind that can be done, it doesn't matter if I have never seen it or heard of it before. For the fact that it crossed my mind is an indication that it is possible, it is doable. Amen? And I pray that you will be a blessing to your generation. Can you repeat that? Philippians 4.13. Together with those online, shall we all say together? Don't just say to me, say it to yourself. Now, Michael, say it to yourself as if you, as if you mean it. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You will in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says, Says thou a man that is diligent. Proverbs 22, 29. In his business. Stop doing ministry the way you have been doing it. Do something different and something better. 
Get out of your comfort zone. Stretch yourself. Look outward. Network with people. Make inquiries. And you'll see glorious things happening in Jesus' name. Change your style. Listen to yourself. Pastor, preach your message. Check up with those that have been with me from the early 90s in this country. When I preach, I record my message for two reasons. Number one, for me to listen to and correct myself. Number two, for others to listen to and get blessed. Many of you, you don't have your messages recorded. You don't listen to yourself. You don't know what you're doing wrong. Listen, when you preach a sermon, go play it, and then ask yourself the question, if I were not the preacher, if somebody else had preached this sermon, will I spend my money to go buy it? If the answer is no, then you need to do something different. I need an amen. You can do it. Because you just told me, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And you can. Develop yourself. Improve yourself. Train yourself. Equip yourself. Retool yourself. And you'll see greater things happening in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Whatever you can do. Whatever you can do. To make a difference. The Lord will help you in Jesus name. Amen. Proverbs 18, 16 says, a man's gift will make a room for him. And don't, not just making a room for him, and bring him before great men. Great men. Great men. Was it yesterday? No. Was it yesterday or so? I was telling you here. Or was it on that place? I was in a conference a few weeks ago. And the conference, I went with two of our pastors. In the whole place, it was only four black people. And out of the four, three of us from Deeper Life. One person from outside of Deeper Life. We're not expected because it's a conference for uh, the people that put it together. But we got invited and we were there. This is where I'm going. In one of the breakout sessions, we were talking and dialoguing. And then a question was asked because we were at the round table. You speak, I speak, and everything. And then when I spoke, and this individual that has been very elderly, have been with the, the Billy Graham crusade and all the rest, and I said, uh, well, between this time and this time, uh, this is how many churches we have started. He said, what? Did I hear you well? I said, yes. And then he got the reference. Did you hear that? And I said, we need to invite these guys to come and teach us about church planting. A man's gifts will make room for him. And right away, there, within a few minutes, I gave them a short, short thing. And I said, this we did, that we did. And then we left. We were walking to our car. Later on, he saw us together. And then he repeated the same thing again. Praise the Lord. My brother there was there. Another, the pastor over there was there too. They were with me then. A man's gift will make a room for him. Don't just remain in your status quo. Be somebody that you can fit in into any environment and make a difference. Listen to this. If you don't do something with your life, life will do something with you. Life will leave you behind. Life will outdate you. Life will consider you obsolete. Life will paralyze you. Life will make you irrelevant. You will look rotten. You'll be rejected and you become invisible. That will not be your portion. In the name of Jesus. 
My time is gone. But I want to remind you again that you need to start thinking different from the way you have been thinking. You need to begin to make yourself visible. You need to begin to make yourself relevant. And please understand, versatility 